and stuff. Did so, you see Trump's 45 minute speech on election yeah, fraud? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I did. Uh, was shocked because I continually, as it was going up and the views were counting, I kept typing Donald Trump into Google and there was no coverage. Now, maybe this morning there is, but I was blown away that it didn't get picked up faster. Now, maybe that that has since occurred. Uh, I don't know, because I think that some people like CNN just said they're not going to cover it because it's mm -hmm. propaganda, which I don't know how one defines propaganda. But uh, I thought it was interesting that he's still fighting the election results mm -hmm. like, hard, like with a strongly worded 45 minute speech. Yeah. Well, where I've landed and uh, is on all of this is, I, of course, I don't know. I don't know if there's fraud yeah, in yeah. Pr prior elections. I wasn't there. I don't know if there's fraud in this election. I don't know. Of course, I don't know. And the battle is over the frequency with which you can just assert claims that people really will not check. Mm -hmm. Baseless voter fraud, no grounds, absurd. You know, um, they just the eye rolling is the is the best argument of the side that doesn't want him to be president. And you know, his is just what well, we saw it in Michigan. We saw it here. It's just a volume of of complaints, uh, with with like no almost no one participating in any evidence based. Yeah, that was, investigation. My, that was my takeaway. I was like, because I try to, I try to go the other direction because I know there's so much push from a lot of news stations to just like toss out what he's saying. So mm -hmm. I try to listen with a charitable ear, but it was hard. He had he gave no context to all of his claims. So I was like, I I have no reason to believe or disbelieve this. You know what I mean? Like I was tuning yeah. into his speech. I was like, I'm not gonna watch commentary. I'm not gonna go to watch other yeah. people. I'm gonna watch his exact speech. And I watch his exact speech. And he's talking about, you know, look, there, here's an evidence of fraud that normally you get this many votes in and an hour. And then there's and then a lot you of get people. this many votes in an hour. Let's I'm just saying, you know, 100, 200, 100, 200, 100. 200. Here's 10,000 in one minute. Yeah. That's impossible. I'm like okay, well, maybe, or maybe the system is just that they count all the mail-in votes separately because they're mail-in, they're paper, whereas the rest of these are done by a computer mm -hmm. and they just input them all at once. Like, I have no context with which to that judge. That might happen in every state, every time, exactly. everything, I, I have, and I had no idea. That might have been what happened in 2016, 2012. Yeah, that, that was my, I was like, I, I have no reason to think anything. The removal of context, you're, man. You're saying now, like, you, yeah, his evidence was so without context. You nailed it. The removal of context, as I was speaking to my dad about some stuff, is the number one way to inform slash misinform people. Because yes. you're like, the government spent a billion dollars on printer ink. Yep. And you're like, a billion? Or it could be a million. And people will freak out. You know, no, like, or then, and then make, these it orders of make it more specific. Say Donald Trump is wasteful with spending. Or Obama is wasteful with spending. Obama? They spent yeah. a billion in printer ink. <laughs> And what you realize is last year they spent one point one billion. Yeah, and the yeah. guy actually saved hundred million dollars because he made a small printer ink adjustment. And of course, that's happening with the death count. Okay, it's it's and they compare it to yesterday or previous. Okay, what is how many people typically die of respiratory diseases? How many like I need something to compare this to in a world and a country of three hundred fifty ish million yeah. people is is two hundred eighty thousand a lot a little? No, it's like I, I, I tuned in to be charitable. I tuned in. I was like, I'm going to really give this a shot because I had previously just said there's fraud every year. I have no reason to think there's more fraud this year, but mm -hmm. I'm sure there's fraud every year because there's mm -hmm. 33. Like, I know. Did I tell you this? People. I, I know of a case of fraud. No, I didn't tell you this. The guy who cuts our hair. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> the guy who cuts, I don't know if I said it on the podcast. Uh, his wife took the mail in ballot, filled it out for him and sent it back. He didn't want to vote. He was, he was like, I don't care. I'm, yeah. I, I might. That's fraud. Yes. <laughs> she but got when, two votes. But here's what I'm saying. <laughs> One person or 10,000 people in 2020 compared to what in 2016? Yeah. Like compared to what in 2012? I think that when you have 330 million people, there will always be fraud. Of and there's been fraud of every course. year. There's been an election forever. Yeah. And so I have no reason to think that there was more or less mm -hmm. this year. And so I tuned in. And I was like, okay, that's been my thought process. And I've just been saying, who? how could anyone possibly know the courts will decide. The courts seem to not be, you know, they mm -hmm. just seem to be re rejecting it. So I just assume it's the same amount of fraud as every year. But I tuned into the speech trying to say, okay, let's do this. And walked away just saying, yeah, this could, this spike could be a clear case cut of fraud or the most obvious case of how the mail-in system works that anyone has ever seen. <laughs> yeah, like and I have no, you're not showing me previous years. You're not showing me every state. You're just showing me one slide for one state. So I can't possibly find this convincing. Yeah. Yeah, I had a similar, It's uh, it even gets worse because we often talk about how the news is untrustworthy and how it's biased. But there's a quote, I forget from who, that's, you know, if you think the news is bad, like, 
what about history, <laughs> right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You think the stuff you're getting today with people that were there that can, so I've been, I was on this bio, biography kick. I was like, I'm going to read biographies. I'm going to learn. And I had two back-to-back things. The first was I started reading one of Chairman Mao. Mm. And it was evident Give just- context for people who don't know who Chairman that Chairman Mao uh, was the guy who kind of depends on your perspective, brought China into the 21st century and industrialized it or killed 50 plus million uh, farmers and peasants in this great leap yeah. forward slash backward. So he, he's, he's the guy on- and not and? And, and potentially. And yeah. this is- so who knows is is how I felt after reading some of this because it was very evident that as I read this person's book that they did not like Chairman Mao. Mm. And some of it I got from just asides that were unnecessary. You know, we see from, from Mao's childhood experience that he at no point does he make any reference to caring about farmers, to which I go, okay, one, who cares? What, like in my childhood, I talked a lot about Power Rangers to, to draw any inference as yeah, to how yeah, I yeah. feel about the Power Rangers when I'm 30 is kind of yeah. stupid. Or even at five, I yeah. understood that there was value to every human life, but I mostly just talked about Ninja Turtles. I didn't if talk you, about if you it. Had a transcription, <laughs> of me, I wouldn't be talking about the, the innate value of human life. And so there was a lot like that. And there was a lot of digs. And I go, okay, I got to put this down because what am I going to, of course, I know what I'm going to think in the same way that if mm. I turn on Fox or MSNBC, I know what perspective I will have at the end of this book. So, like, why even try? Uh, and then I picked up another one that was by, uh, that was about rather Rockefeller. It's called Titan. And the first chapter is how he, so he had an official biographer and there was a note, uh, the biographer who wrote about him and this person is then writing later. But the reason he had an official biographer is because the first biographer in his perspective slandered him <laughs> and made him out <laughs> to be a robber baron. Yeah. And this other biographer concluded that he was the guy who built America. Mm. And then this person comes and what do they do? You know, maybe it's somewhere in between. But of course, now the people who set these bookends, as crazy as they are, now we're just going to find the middle between two people who might have been crazy. And maybe he was a pure robber baron. Maybe he was the greatest man who built America. Yeah, yeah. And what am I going to land in the middle arbitrarily? Yeah. Like, So I had to put it down and go, I know nothing. There's no way for me to know about John Rockefeller. Yeah. And even, even if I go with, I read six books and I go with the consensus of six historians, at best, I am left with the chance that the six of them got it wrong. <laughs> you know? sure. uh, so I had to put biographies down and be like, damn, I'm screwed. I can't know anything. Yeah, yeah. You can't know anything about the, you can't know anything about the present because the news is biased. You can't know anything about the past because every book was written by an author who had an implicit bias. Yeah. And so, and I was like, what can I read Oh, anymore? and sorry, and your anecdotal personal experience is not statistically significant, so you shouldn't make any decisions based on that. Well, so just don't use the news, <laughs> your personal anecdotal experience, or history. Yeah, and where I land but is- But besides that, inform yourself. I land on anecdotes of all of these things with the obvious drawbacks that we all know. Well, I think the biggest thing you land on is to not feel- so strongly about something that you yeah, can't yeah. have your mind changed, which yeah. I think is something you implicitly do, but don't often talk about. Mm -hmm. Like being willing to change your mind on almost anything is how you approach most topics. I mean, that's that's uh, that's how I would like to approach most topics. That's not actually true. Most of topics, my... unless you're talking to your dad. In which case I have to win. <laughs> <laughs> Winning is the most important. So yeah, I've uh, that's that's I think what attracted me even 15 years ago to philosophy, which mm -hmm. is you can do this with limited uh, appeal to real world data. Like politics matters so much how you would get the data and interpret the data is coronavirus killing people, isn't it? But you can do philosophy with very little uh, recourse to disputed real world mm -hmm. facts and figures, which is why I like it so much, I think. Um, so I can, I can jump. This is a C transition. Hope that you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to see more like this and have us do more podcasts, we are 100% funded by our generous patrons. And if you'd like to contribute, there's a link in the description and we'll have one pop up on the screen right here so that we can do more podcasts where we have fun conversations and hopefully some deep ones like this. Either way, hope that you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.